Here we are, as promised, the uh, Shangyang F5. Chinese 9.0 tier 5 premium. It's great, it really is. Although you really do need to get used to the guns. I'm gonna be starting off with some gameplay, some dogfights, some, uh, some moments. And it will all be in chronological order, so you can slowly see me get used to the guns. Uh, the first couple of games, my aim will be very terrible. And later on, it will be, well, less terrible. I never really got used to MiG 37s, and it's one of the reasons I think you shouldn't buy MiGs as your first premium jet. I just, I think you shouldn't buy a premium jet to begin with if you don't have anything. But that aside, and we can start right off with this. The power this thing has is absolutely insane, especially for a 9.0. You can just go up with about everything. I'm going, what, 900 at the start. I'm going up. A5 can truly really follow this, and we all know that the A5 is pretty underpowered. But it stalls very late. So this kind of fight is still very dangerous. But I'm going over his nose. I'm going to drop right down here. He's about to stall out. I'm just going to cut my throttle. Drop my air brake. Drop my flaps. And you can see. Oh there we go. That's so nice. The, the lag. That's why I also pull my flaps in as soon as I can. I miss a stalling out A5. And he stalls. On to the next one. This is more of an actual example of what the plane. Uh, how I go defensive in it. Because what I like to do is, when people aren't that close yet, of course it only applies when you can't outrun them, I try to go up so I don't bleed as much speed, I become a lot more maneuverable because this thing compresses quite a bit. If you've flown the MiG-17, you, you know how much it compresses. It's pretty close, but this plane is a bit heavier and you definitely feel it. Of course it does make up for the after, with the afterburner. And what I did right here is I brought him up, I got him quite slow, I started the sizzle, he started to notice quite soon that he is not going to win a dogfight like that. So he breaks off. And that's one gun. F2 thinks he can pitch up for me. Surprise, surprise. You can't. I turn on my afterburner. I loop back over. Because if he had followed that, he would have stalled out. He noticed that. But right now, he's going about 500 kph. And within 300 meters, not the hardest shot in the world. And I take him down. F1 is coming back, but he died by my team. A couple of games later, I'm going vertical with the LD F5 because again, I'm trying to get some speed bleed. So, if it makes sense to you, I try to go up first so that the maneuvers I do do cost a lot less energy. So, in the end, I will have more energy. But of course, I was expecting him to air brake. I thought he was going very slow, so I air brake a little bit with him. Turns out he wasn't. He's just gonna do a loop around me. He's just gonna be extending away. Got a very ambitious shot there. It was actually quite close to my surprise, but I'm not the best with these guns. I never have been, and I never really will be. They, they don't fit me at all. And I won't be the only one. It's uh, not a symmetrical gun layout. It's on the bottom right. So everything together, and the slow velocity, and the low volume of fire, because it's kind of a single shot. Of course, it's fully automatic, but it's, it doesn't like cover a lot of ground when you spray. So it's very hard to use, especially versus jets in up tiers versus supersonics that's why i like these missiles normally i wouldn't use them in this kind of angle but i thought i have to get rid of them i want him dead and luckily for me it actually killed him because of that missile i was able to 2v1 over here what kind of a 2v1 he air braked at the start so what do, I, what do i do i just go up and you can see right now that he has a lot less energy than me even though he came in a lot faster he tried the air brake in a flat turn that's not really going to do you much good. And the top of his loop is pretty much the middle of mine. So if I just keep looping like this, there's pretty much nothing he can do. I'm just going to extend away for a little bit, get some altitude. And he's in the same plane and I'm out climbing him. I have more energy. And you can see that I'm 1.4 almost above him and I'm outrunning him. Which means I have a substantial amount of more energy. That's good. So I can just loop over around 300. There's no way he's going to pitch up for this. Well, he is, but there's no way he's going to get the shot doing that. Now I'm just going to loop over. Flaps. Ah, oh, fantastic. I might actually be able to get a kill there if the flaps worked properly. But alas. And now it's a matter of cleaning up. And you can see that, like, I can I can use these guns in deflections. And, like, these kind of shots. Normally, of course, I miss exactly when I say that. But normally I don't have much trouble with those kinds of shots. It's when I start the tilt chase. And now I drop my flaps and the game starts lagging out. I think we've all experienced this lately. 
And man, is it annoying. Like, it's almost impossible to hit. I'm still trying to get, like, the, my nose on, and I actually managed to get another hit. And I'm noticing that my team is just crumbling, so I'm just starting to spray right now. And that, that's another one dead. And here for the first actual games. Tap in and head on, crits him. So I'm trying to follow to see what I actually crit on him. I couldn't actually make it out. But he's crit, he's a MiG-17, so I doubt he's gonna be much of a problem. MiG-17s in general, when they crit, aren't much of a problem. And I believe that's the premium one as well. So that makes it even less, in my eyes at least, of a problem. And he's crit. So I think I'm gonna be fine with that one. And right now I'm just looking for targets. He looks to be going back to base. Which is exactly what I want him to do. Hope he crashes on landing. Gives me a kill. Gives me some RP. Always nice. And again, I'm just vulturing. I'm just trying to look for targets. Uh, people that are paying attention to you are extremely hard to hit. Unless you try to, to park on the ass, you're faster than them. And then you start to try to air break them. That's a very solid way. But it's also a very solid way to get yourself killed. Didn't really know who to go for. He started rolling away. And then he started pulling straight for a bit. I'm going supersonic and my Elon's completely compressed at this point. I tried to follow him. I couldn't do it. So I just threw my, engine, uh, my afterburner back home and I'm going straight up. Hunter F1. He has very little chance of actually doing much against me. But he's still very annoying because it's in Hunter F1. He turns pretty well at high speeds and he rolls pretty well. And he has very good guns. So it's kind of annoying to get out of his guns. When you're fast, and he's kind of annoying to hit. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to be locking him down. The F5 over there is probably going to follow me, but I'm going quite a bit faster than him, and he still has to turn. And I think that I can get close enough to the hunter that I can kill the hunter, and then after I kill the hunter, I can reverse the F5. At this point, I'm kind of hoping that the A5 distracts the F5 a little bit to no avail. But it makes it easier for me to stick on this hunter. And the longer I stay on this hunter with that A5 on him, the F5 is going to lose some energy on my 6. And an A5 is very, very dangerous when he's on you and you're slow. I try to predict his roll and I shoot and I take a part of his tail off. I think that he's dead at this point, I'm not too sure. But he's crit, even a hunter F1. And the way I was catching him, I think he wasn't even spaded. So I count him as out of the fight for now. Try to do a scissor with him because it was a little bit faster. Hunter actually crashes, which is very nice. Try to get a shot on the A5. He pulls just in time. And he does a very faint roll and I... Uh, I don't know, these guns are very annoying to me. Trying to hit him a bit too far to the right. Trying to overcompensate for the fact that my gun is on the right side. Get a crit on him. The moment I get a crit, I'm going to break off. I'm going to be focusing on the F5 again. Teammates are coming in, so now I have a crit A5, which is probably not much of a problem, and an F5. But the F5 is a lot faster than me, so I'm not going to chase him. I'd rather just lock this A5 down, stall him out for my team, and uh, maybe it's an easy kill. Apparently it wasn't. Maybe just a harder shot than it actually looked like on my end. It's still an A5, it's still extremely squirmy. No, I can't blame people for that. He's very occupied with shooting at the, uh, the guy in front of me. Get two more hits on him. Still not dead. And fight's going back. Try to head on. Get another hit. Mostly 23 hits over here. So that's why you won't be seeing a lot of one shot. 23s have a lot higher fire rate. So most of the time when you, you start spraying. You're connected 23 and not the, the 37. Which makes it so that it looks like you're sparking the 37. But 9 out of 10 times you're actually just sparking the, the 20 trees. And you can say that, see that by the, the buffs. The 37s have a very thick cloud. As you will see in just a second here. And the 20 trees have more of these uh, puffs of smoke. I'm just trying to spray a little bit with the, the 20 trees to make him the move. He doesn't seem to be... I don't, I don't know what he's doing. I honestly don't know what you're doing at this point. You're not outrunning me. Try to reverse me or something. You're not outrunning me. Try to do something. All you're doing right now is just making it so that I'm going to be on you forever. And that's not going to do you much good. When you get someone on you like this, either try to outrun him. But if you can't outrun someone, 
Let me just try to try to dog fight him. See that? Uh, the black cloud was the 27. The F2 I missed, and then I wasted all my ammo, and no one really wants to see that. Nothing more happened after that. I landed on, I got strafed by him. That's a bit sad, but you know, that's life. Uh, a week later, this was actually yesterday, I like to go straight in with this thing, in the, the semi-down tiers, because people will not be able to catch me. I just go straight in, I dodge all the head-ons, and most people, because you're the first one they spot, will be going for you. Which means that a lot of people will drain their speed, which is good. There comes the R4, the A9Bs, which aren't much of a threat. I wasn't gonna go straight for the Seahawk, but if I continued to him, I probably would have been able to easily kill him, but I would have been able to be cut off by one of the planes behind me, the G91 or the F30, which is something I don't want, so I extended. I hope that the J2 would not uh, notice me and maybe fly away, keep going straight so I could fit on his ass, but you know, not everything goes according to plan. And here I see the, the F-30 and I see a G-91. The F-30 presents itself, but then I see the G-91 come in, so I think maybe I can get a double kill. I miss, and it looks like he's flying straight, and the moment I shoot, he gets a ping spike and he pulls. <laughs> and of course, I would have hit him if he uh, wouldn't have hit him in any way, even if he didn't get a ping spike. But that roll was just very uh, snappy to me. Maybe I wouldn't have shot if he didn't get the ping spike. But, uh, you know, one more survived to my incompetence with the guns. It's, uh, the guns, like, I wait too long with these guns because I'm not very confident with them. And I don't want to waste ammo. And a lot of times, as you just saw, that will happen where I'm on someone. I could have been, like, an easy kill. But because I was so busy trying to, like, conserve my ammo and not spray, uh, I let the kill get away. And here I see the R4, and unfortunate, I only hit a 23, or a few 23s. But he's damaged, and that's nice, so I'm just gonna go up. Everyone is slowed down below, except for this MiG-15. But a MiG-15 isn't much of a problem, because he doesn't have a good aileron control. He has a way lower top speed. And the longer the game lasts, the more of an advantage I get, because I burn a lot more fuel than the other MiGs. Because of the afterburn, I, I, I burn a lot more, so they have... Minimum fuel, most likely. Most MiG-15s have that. And I have 20 minutes, but I go down a lot faster. So the longer it takes, the more of an advantage that I get. Of course, if they take 20 minutes and I don't kill them in those 11 minutes of fuel that I have, I will be strafed, which is incredible. I'm trying to focus on the J2 over here. I don't think he's going to get the shot on me before I go to the Seahawk. Looks like he's focusing on the A5, which is perfect for me. So I can stall on the F or on the Seahawk. And the J2 is right in front of me, so that's not a problem. I'm actually gonna spray a little bit. Take his tail off, kill his pilot. Just perfect. J2 is flying straight for a little bit, so I'm like shoot a missile, and that's the exact moment he's starting to pull. Spray a bit, next G. At this point I have a lot of ammo, my team is like, in the number advantage. And when that happens, I start to get a lot less ammo conservative. I start caring a bit more about the RP and the kills that I can get. Try to not pull too much and bleed too much speed, because this MiG-15 definitely has the energy advantage. That one dies, and that means that I'm on his 6. And that there's no one near him to help. A bit too much to the left. A bit <laughs> too little lead. I'm getting on him. At this point he's starting to spiral, which I don't know why he's doing that. And now he's very slow, and now the shot isn't very hard anymore, and I take his plane apart. There's, however, one thing you have to keep in mind. I'm just going to show the other two kills as well. There are bombers. Not that special, but it makes uh, for some good time to ramble. The MiG-17 is actually a bit lighter than you, which makes it turn a little bit better in the dogfight. Of course, it doesn't mean that he's better in the dogfight, but be careful. You might be able, to, you will be able to uh, definitely out energy them. But once you start doing flat turns and stuff, he might be actually, he might actually be able to just kill you, just by a straight out flat turning. Because he does turn a little bit better. And most MiG 70s run minimum fuel because they don't have an afterburner to worry about, so they are a lot lighter as well. So keep that in mind. You might be a better MiG 17, but it doesn't mean you're always better in the dogfight. 
especially the minimum fuel ones. They turn a lot better because of the, the weight, but you have a lot more powerful engine, so use it. Use your vertical, don't use your turn rate. And here's the Canberra. He climbed to uh, 11 kilometers. I was at 4 kilometers when I spotted him, and I can just go straight up for him. It's, it's fantastic. And he actually noticed me at this point. I'm priming my missile. I'm like, I'm going to be waiting till I'm a bit closer. I'm a bit more straight so he doesn't get the radar warning or the, the missile warning. And he starts diving out. And diving in the Canberra, I think he was trying to, to rip himself so that I wouldn't get the kill. Because in a little bit he starts to neck G, which is something you do when you try to rip. But I'm just waiting for him to outrun me a little bit. He's probably compressing at this point and there's just no way he's dodging it. Canberra going 750, you're not dodging a missile, you're compressing, you're gonna fly straight. And especially if you try to dodge with a neck G, and there you have it, 32,000 RP, and that's without a booster. So that's pretty exceptional. Of course, the longer the game lasts, the more RP you get. But in terms of RP, if you really want to grind something and you are used to jets, I actually do recommend this thing, of course. It's a bit of a pain to fly as well, but it's just not very forgiving. Of course, it's a good plane. It's just not very... I don't want to say it, but it's not very noob friendly. So if you're not confident in your abilities in Air RB, I don't really recommend this thing. Shoot a missile on him, because you know, why not? He's, he looks to be flying straight. He didn't even care about the G91 shooting at him. And that's an easy kill. That's kill one. I like wasting missiles on people like that because it doesn't cost me any time to catch him. It doesn't cost me any time to spray at him. It's so time efficient. It's fantastic. So whenever I see someone that's AFK, I will just shoot a missile on your ass. And just the afterburner makes this plane a joy to fly. It's just, if this thing had a different gun, I would actually enjoy flying it instead of just making the plane a joy to fly. I'm not a very big fan of this thing. And here comes the F2. Very predictable wall. He probably didn't see me. I crit him. I take his tail off. My tail's in the way, but I was trying to get the tail not in front of his plane. So I could actually see him. He builds out and he crashes. And that's kill number two. Here comes the F100. Old squadron member. So I know he's not the biggest potato. That sounds very uh, rude, doesn't it? But I know that he's not retarded. So I'm just going to be... Uh, Looking out for him, he presents his ass, and I'm thinking to myself, he's flying straight, I have a missile primed, I'm just gonna shoot a missile and he's dead. What does a missile do? It just. I don't know what a missile did. F100 and all the supersonics are very annoying in this plane. Almost got killed by the MiG 19 there. Luckily, he couldn't aim more than shit. Or maybe he was just penetrating, I, I don't know. Look, he just missed, that's good for me. I'm gonna go up for him, his retention is a lot worse than mine. He's paying attention to the, the other guy because he's shooting him. So I'm gonna be setting up for the for these two kills. Of course, I do want to keep in mind that Ozone Lock is also in the area. He's staying fast, he's doing boomer zooms. And I don't want to fall prey for that. Because an F100 doing boomer zooms is uh, pretty pretty damn deadly. As we all know, 800 rounds, 200 rounds, a gun of M39. Very easy to aim. All in all, that's not a fun thing to get on your ass. Got a crit on him. Elevator. Trying to look for the for the other F100 on my 6. Somewhere on my 6. I know he's around the, the base area. I don't want him to present my... Uh, I don't want me to present my ass to him. And at this point, I'm just trying to look for a target. There goes the F100. Then I crit. He got missile. Perfect. Don't have to worry about him anymore. F100 is a decent distance away and I don't think he sees me at this point. So the MiG-19 is occupied in a dogfight with someone. It gives it a perfect opportunity for me to just zoom up to him. F100 is busy with someone else. He's trying to defensive fly. If he tries to come towards me right now, he's going to get killed. And there we go. MiG-19 dead as well. F100 comes back. Trying to get on him before he passes. Unfortunately, I couldn't do that. I completely mistimed my roll. And he gets some separation again. And this is the, the sad truth with this plane. You'll be uh, facing people running away from you a lot. Because that's, to be honest, what you should do with this thing. If you can outrun this thing, outrun it. 
you don't really want to dogfight it. The energy retention on it is really good. It turns very well, just like a MiG-17, of course, a little bit worse. And it has a very good engine. So what you don't want to do is try to dogfight it. Of course, when it's already, when you're already on at six, the speed loss or the lack of speed loss might actually be very annoying because you don't bleed enough speed so that people might overshoot. Trying to get a keyboard just too much to the right. Unfortunate. Try to shoot a little bit more and not enough lead. And here we go again, he's starting to run away and that, that's all he can do. So, people, that's why supersonics in my opinion are very annoying. It's not because of the, the gameplay, or it is because of the gameplay. It's not because of the people that fly them, because you kind of have to fly like that. It's just, you know, it's so boring. Like, he can't do anything versus me, and I can't do anything versus him. You know, it's frustrating on both ends. Because I'm trying to kill him, and he's trying to kill me. But you come in this kind of stalemate where one can't get guns on you and I can't get guns on you either because I'm a MiG-17, I compress, the gun is very hard to use. So all in all, the, the, the total picture is, it's a bitch, it's a total bitch. But you know, I can't blame these people. Trying to get on a 6 and once I saw his heading right here, I knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah, it's gonna go for the runway. So, what I'm going to be doing right here is... I'm trying to get a shot, but I think he definitely sees me. And I'm not going to waste any ammo on that. And when this kind of shit happens, you kind of have to just hope that you have a teammate that uh, can run him down. Luckily for me, I have an F4 Phantom. And what I could do otherwise is lay off the web, wait for him to run out of fuel, yes I know, and then strafe him. That's another option. And that's exactly what he's going to be doing. And that's also why I'm not following it. What I'm doing right here is I'm taking the shortest route towards the runway. And why do I do that? The shorter route might be just as fast as his long route. He's a lot faster than me, but he's trying to dive. He's staying on the deck. And I'm kind of cutting him off right now. I'm slowly catching him. I'm going 11.20. Do be careful that once you activate that afterburner, you will start to rip at around 11.50. So do be careful of that. And there it goes. And once you start pushing it, you will actually rip. So don't do that. Sadly for me, I kind of misjudged it. I'm point six on and the F4 starts lobbing missiles. And we're starting to go up. And at this point, I'm just sticking on him for the fact that we're gonna reach the map border. And if he tries to turn to get rid of that map border, he will bleed more speed than me. And I will stay on the six. Supplies his swing, sadly. One above, one below. And he's starting to climb away again. And at this point, I couldn't have done anything. But here comes the F4. And the F100 can easily reverse the F4. But there's one little problem that comes with that. And that is that there's also an F5 right on the 6. And you can see here, like at this point, there's very little you can do. He's going very slow. I'm right on the 6, point 3, easy shot, and he's dead. And that's pretty much all I have for you today. I hope it was educational, despite me being not the best at flying this thing. I don't really enjoy this thing, so I hope that it paid off for you all. You'll be hearing from me very soon, and I'll see you in the next one.